All right, so continuing on with the oil gauge project, we've got this uh, gauge. Let's see here. I got my connection right there, and I'll fasten down this gauge later. And then I brought my tubing down here. But I put this sleeve on it. It's usually used for electrical wires, this black sleeve. It has a slit in it. It has a slit in it there. Where you can insert this tube. And uh, I found out that uh, it's actually uh, a good protection sleeve. And I'm gonna run it down here. Sorry everything's so jittery, but I don't have my stand for my camera here. So I'm gonna run it down here like this. And I have to get a I have to get uh, let's see if I can get a have to get a special wrench here. Uh, let's use this needle nose. Seeing as I drop my fitting, not too good there, Grampy. Put that there next to the other fitting. Now, the thing about this, by the way, I want to show you this piece here. This is a uh, really nifty tool to have because when you take out a part like I took out of the block, you know, and you want to stick that particular fitting into this tool to determine what size it is. So the thread that is. So you take this fitting out and unscrew it, take it out, say, gee, I wonder what fitting that is because I want to get a, you know, this T block, uh, you know, adapt this fitting. What, what size block do I need to buy? And so you go and you screw it in like, and you can see this dirty one right here right there, that it was a metric size M8 diameter 0.315 and a pitch in millimeters of 1.25. And that kind of gets me going in the right place to get the right tools to fit into the block. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this Flared fitting, uh, the flare goes towards the fitting, and the broader back end here goes onto the plastic tubing, but first you have to put this nut on, and so slip this onto the tubing first, and you slip this flared fitting, it's a compression fitting, onto the end of the tube, and then as you tighten them down onto your fitting here, that flare fitting going inside here will make the compression complete so there will be no leak. And uh, then I will have retained both the electrical sensor, oil sensor for my dash light that goes on if there's an oil issue, Plus have the mechanical gauge, which is lit because I want to run one of the wires to my ignition switch, which is a positive wire, which will send a feed to the light bulb and give me illumination at night so I can see what's going on. I don't want to worry about some idiot light not working for me because the bulb went out or some other bad connection, electrical connection is not warning me that I've got an oil pressure issue on my engine. And this is the kind of thing that, you know, it's big bucks. I cost, it costs $10 to buy a gauge. 
You know, I wish I had the copper line, but it didn't come with copper line. It came with plastic line, and it makes it a little less durable. But, you know, if I ever find a copper line laying around, I'll probably switch it out. But in the meantime, I just covered it with the black protection, so for vibration and all, it won't rub through that plastic line, and we're good to go. That's really the best way to do this project. I'm doing the same thing on the thermostat. The thermostat, which is here in the housing, this is where your thermostat goes for your engine block temperature. And But this is the sensing unit. I'm going to replace that with a mechanical gauge also, which I picked up from Amazon, which is a water temperature gauge. And as you can see through the plastic, it gives me nice num num numeral indications as to what my temperature is. And seeing as the fellow who had this tractor last time didn't have a gauge, a mechanical gauge, he just had the you know the idiot light sensor which may or may not have been working that that's something i don't know about well in, in my case what i'm going to do is i'm going to put it in i'm going to put that either right here or i got two inches of space and i got again just like this gauge here i'll be able to see what's going on and i got then of course just the fuel gauge is the only other gauge and uh, you know the hours and the rpm gauge uh, that that's all I need. That's that's enough to make this safe during operation. So, all right, that's good for now. We'll talk to you later.